Happy Sunday, all you mentees! This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at the Who's Who Omnibus from DC Comics. Let's take a look together. Alright, so this is one that I've been getting a lot of questions about and I'm excited to talk about. But before I get started, this book does come out in the direct market and book market on April 13th. It only has one cover. And this is it. You may have seen another cover in the solicitations with Aquaman on it, but this is the cover that they decided to go with. So we're going to be looking at the spine and then, of course, the back cover here. The book retails for $150 and it is a big book. One of the things you're going to notice first is the color of the pages and they may look aged and you're going to be like, man, what happened? Did my book get wet? Why does it look like that? It's just the way that the pages are inside of the book. Let me show you. See how it gets white towards the bottom? That's the way the pages are in here for each of the characters. So um, let's see. Let's look at it under this dust jacket. By the way, the dust jacket doesn't have a glossy finish to it. It's just this flat matte finish to it. Um, so it doesn't shine or anything. Let's take a look at it underneath it. Whereas underneath the dust jacket has a little bit of a gloss to it. But here you get the full image right here. And it's a beautiful piece of all of these characters that you may or may not be familiar with. Some of them I know you know who they are, but there's different incarnations of them. And that's exactly what this book may help some of you learn about these characters. So let's get this open. All right. So here we have the bookend pages. Very nice. I like that. I like the art. I like a lot of the art in this. So this is the who's who. Here is an introduction by Robert Greensburg, who was one of the people that put uh, the effort behind this book among two other creators that you may know, Marf Wolfman and Len Wein. Uh, here is issue number one. This is the one that I've seen as the cover of this particular omnibus. And this is the one that's drawn by George Perez. So what is the who's who, the definitive directory of the DC Universe? So much like the Marvel Handbook Guide to the Marvel Universe, this is a who's who. I mean, the title says it all from DC characters. Now, the important thing to note here is that when the series was first created by, like I said, Len Wein, Marf Wolfman, and Robert Greenberger, the series started before Crisis on Infinite Earths. So a lot of the thing towards the beginning of the first like 12 issues is kind of outdated and it doesn't involve any of the events that happen through Crisis. And I'll talk about a couple of examples here. So each character and each team gets a pay. Actually, it's interesting because in the deluxe version of the Marvel one, some of the characters get two, three, four pages. In this, it's interesting to see that you know, some of the big characters get like one page. And let's see, I'm talking about mainly Aquaman. Like Aqualad and Aquagirl share a page, but Aquaman gets just one page to himself. So let's use Aquaman for an example. It talks about his alter ego, Arthur Curry, his occupation, his marital status, uh, his known relatives and who's dead and alive from his known relatives and his first appearance, which is more fun comics number 73, his height, weight, and eye color and hair color. Now, this is a little bit different than the Marvel version because in Marvel version, we talked about powers and pretty much strength and stuff like that. This just gets to the basic details and I think that's why they can leave it as one page. But one thing you'll probably notice man, I love that character. I used to have so many of these when I was a kid, um, is that the artwork is a little more dynamic, whereas the Marvel characters are just standing there to kind of give you sometimes a front, back, and a side look to the characters. In this, they're actually doing poses. Look how badass the Adam looks. That is awesome. That's, that's Gil Kane. Oh, and they do tell you somewhere, yeah, there we go, who the artists are through these books. And there's a lot of talent here. Carmine Infantino, a lot of Kurt, uh, Kurt Swan in here. There's a lot of classic artists. There's some new young blood artists that were there at the time, like George Perez. Um, I think even Marf Wolfman talked about him drawing in one character and I can't find it yet because I didn't have these all growing up. So in each of the issues, so this is issue number two. So it says the definitive directory of the DC universe, who's who, volume two. Kind of gives you a breakdown on who's in here. And then on the opposite side of the cover is the explanation as to what this is. So they started this, like I said, this project before Crisis on Infinite Earths. I'm going to skip a little bit because I'm going to talk about mainly one character that is 
affected by all of this. No, not Fastback. Is that a guy from the Teen Titans? Some of these characters I have a lot of fun looking at, because like I said, I didn't own a lot of these. I owned a couple of them. I didn't even know DC had their own thing. Okay, so The Flash, for example. The Flash gets... Actually, look at that. The Flash gets a spread page. Uh, but the Golden Age Flash... So we have the Golden Age Flash. Jay Garrick talks about his first appearance and then we have the silver age flash now you know this takes place before crisis on infinite earths because it doesn't talk about a specific something that happened to him, barry in issue number eight and also doesn't have wally west as the flash so it's not updated however remember when i said it takes like 12 issues to catch up because this started uh before crisis by the time we get to let's go ahead and get the oh, luthor luther uh, always loved that outfit. Might have been because of the Super Friends. So it talks about the Golden Age Luther, the Silver Age Luther. And then, um, obviously, the Crisis on Infinite Earths Luther. So this is another character, and it explains the worlds they come from. So here, for example, we have four Luthers, whereas we only had two Flashes. And they do start updating them later on. There's my boy, Nightwing. Yeah. And then the original Nightwing, who he got his name from, and Flame Bird. So if you don't know like some of these characters, it's really fun to get to know them through these pages. And like I said, it's got a lot of wonderful artwork. A lot of them, like um, I know that Keith Giffen, um, he insisted on drawing a lot of the Legion of Superhero characters. There's some Arthur Adams in here. That is an awesome. That's Jerry Bingham, I think. Yeah. That's awesome. There's Raven with her current look during the time by George Pettis. So if the artist was working on the book, they were usually the ones that were drawing the characters. Now, uh, really important before we get to talk about the post-crisis characters as these uh, issues catch up, is what is included in here. So this does include the original 26-issue event, or maxi series rather of the who's who the definitive directory of the dc universe so 1 through 26 and then there's an updated version in 87 where a lot of the post-crisis characters are introduced like booster gold and a lot a lot of new things and a lot of new story ideas are introduced so a lot of the like characters are revised like batman and batgirl then there's also the who's who update from 88 1 through 4 and then the annuals in 1989 had some who's who backup pages those are all in here now what's not in here is of course the stuff from the 90s and the i think they started doing it again in the early aughts they had an idea of doing an updated one right before Flashpoint, so right before the New 52, and of course, New 52 just changed everything, so they canceled that idea. Okay, so by the time we get to Superman, or Lex Luthor, rather, we have an entry for Superman, the Golden Age Superman, who appeared in Action Comics number one, and then we have the Silver Age Superman, who also appeared in Action Comics number one, but has a different history because the Golden Age Superman's history was retconned. And we go back to this, and you know that Supergirl, what happens to Supergirl in issue number seven, all of that is in here of Crisis on Infinite Earth. So you know by the time we get to here, and like I said, Lex Luthor, that the stories and the plots have been updated to include what happens in Crisis on Infinite Earths. And this is what I meant by the pages. So they all start with this yellow border, and then they get kind of digitized to this white border. So that's why the pages look like that. Um, now, the updated stuff is really cool because they include, here, let's get to the ending. So here's issue number one. Each one of the issues, by the way, is, has a spread page cover. So these include all the new characters that are introduced through the pages of Crisis on Infinite Earth. So a lot of them, they came from either the uh, Charlton uh, buyout or uh, some of them are just introduced like Booster Gold. And... Some of these are updated, like Ares was first introduced in the pages of George Pettis' Wonder Woman. Let me see if I can find... So then you'll have Batgirl, revised, because of things that happened, and her history has been changed a little bit. You also have a revised Batman, it's a wonderful piece by Alan Davis, whose history was changed in Crisis on Infinite Earths. So it's kind of like you get through relive Crisis on, on Infinite Earths through this who's who. And yes, you know, to a new reader, it's still kind of confusing because you want to know why they did that. And pretty much it was just to simplify these different stories and Earths. Now we have Blue Beetle revised because we do get to talk about the character of Dan Garrett. 
as well as Ted Cord. And there's my boy, Booster. The other thing that they have in here are teams and then settings, too. Like, they have a lot of the bad guys... Uh, basis of uh, operations and where the good guys hang out there's the green lantern core the guardians of the universe revise and i think commissioner gordon which if you read like about the golden age batman you get to find out that he was retired or if you read about the golden age catwoman and golden age batman you know that they had a kid and that's who one of the big characters is uh, that history has been retconned now because that character is still around hanging out with the birds of prey uh, you can read that all on your own, even though, God bless, the stories are over 60, 70 years old. Um, you know, try not to spoil anything, even if it's things like that that I think is common knowledge. So, this is the kind of stuff that you'll be seeing in here. And the book, like I said, has 1,300... Did I, did I mention the page count? Because this is a thick book. This book has 1,320 pages. There's Superboy, and that, talk, that, that took talk on Kenny Omar talk pretty one day uh Superboy that took some time to get into this book because of the whole Jerry Siegel thing and his family and the estate that they didn't want or Jerry Siegel didn't lawsuits you can read about it online I'm sure it's recorded somewhere but this is really cool because they also include different worlds so it's not just the DC universe but also their expanded universe that aren't really part of them like the Watchmen they're all in here all the characters so that's really cool so artwork in here you get and you get artwork in here from people like walter simonson like i mentioned arthur adams um, alan davis and then a lot of the classic artists too that do a lot of the old school characters jack kirby has some artwork in here so there's all kinds of obscure characters hey that's the dude from the titans um that show up in here and a lot of them I'm, I was not even familiar with a lot of them had their own um, ongoing series or little mini series that's Eric Larson if I'm not mistaken yep Eric Larson it's Doom Patrol he did draw some Morrison Doom Patrol that's right Gangbuster you can find out about the original Guardian and Gangbuster now see here in the updated stuff you get to find out about Ollie's updated origin uh, in the original who's who back here you get the original Golden Age green arrow and then you get the silver age green arrow but you don't get an updated look to green arrow during the long bow hunters arc by mike grell even though mike grell draws this piece right here green lantern golden age silver age and then of course you have john stewart right there no guy gardner i think he gets his own piece i think that was one of the issues i had was the one with guy gardner and i thought it was interesting because he wrote his own bio if i'm remembering right I want to say that was him. That's Larson, yeah. So, that's what this book contains. All the covers, like I said, are spread pages. Let's look in the back. I don't think there's going to be anything extra, but let's just look back here. See, there's an updated Barbara Gordon entry back here. More updated Batman entries and Black Canary. You can find out uh, the difference between her and her namesake, her mom. All right, so no extras but something really cool. And that is the character index with the page where you can find the characters. And I'm sure as I was flipping through here, you could tell that the book does have pages at the bottom. So for example, if you want to find out about Black Orchid, I don't know why I chose Black Orchid, you turn to page 79 and there's Black Orchid on page 79. I feel like I just did a commercial for the library and the card catalog. I know I'm aging myself, but I used to do those when I was in school, like in-school commercials on videos. All right, but let's look at the binding because like I said, 1,320 pages. Let's see how well this book holds up. Quicksilver, don't you mean Max Mercury? Oh, that is one thing before we look at the binding. Uh, so they do use their old school names. So Quicksilver, Max Mercury, as some of you all know him, but more importantly, Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr. So the original names are here. So no Shazam. I mean, they do talk about who Shazam is, but the original names are as they were originally published. Now, back to the binding. So there is your eye. That's actually a pretty good size eye, honestly. Not a lot of glue down there. You know, I've seen a lot more excess glue in some other bigger DC books, but this one doesn't have that much. We are looking at the very first issue, and this is what the spread pages look like. So... Can I hold it down a little bit to see some there is some gutter loss not very much and it's mainly on the covers but let's look more inside this is what the image looks like when we get to volume 24 I think this is George Perez that looks like a Perez manhunter 
Oh, yeah. George Perez and his inker. Um, now let's look towards the back. So here we are in the back. This is issue 24. Um, in the back, it always has more issues laying down uh, more than the front. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's the way the, ba the, the, the book lays. But... Here we go with just a little bit of gutter loss. This actually is one of my favorite ones because this shows the supporting cast members of all these comics. This is what starts it. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book when it comes out, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for US customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in those comments down below if you even knew what this was, if you had some of these issues growing up, if you're gonna buy this book, if you're going in on, on a blind buy, I would love to know all those comments down below. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon. Amazing, phenomenal ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, everybody, stay healthy, stay safe, much love.